So uh, my name is Jie Wen Yao. I'm a TDX architect for the virtual firmware and attestation. Today, uh, Ken and I will talk about the secure bootloader for confidential computing. Uh, let's go to page four. Uh, in the first part, I will discuss the measurement and the trust chain setup. And in the second part, Ken will share the thoughts on the attestation and disk encryption solution. Uh, next page. Uh, we can we have two typical use cases for the confidential computing in the cloud usage. And the figure in the left hand side shows the confidential VM use case, and the OVMF is the virtual firmware. It launches the GRUP bootloader and the guest kernel in TARD. And then the OS application in the OM, uh, uh, VM OS. And the figure in the right hand side shows the confidential container use case. The life cycle of container is much shorter than the VM. As such, it requires a lightweight virtual firmware. Here we use TDSHIM to replace the OVMF in the TDX use case. And TDSHIM can boot the kernel directly, then launch the container. Uh, next page. The attestation is uh, one most important feature in the confidential computing. This figure shows the remote attest flow. The TCB underneath uh, is the root of trust for the measurement. And the virtual firmware, like OVMF, together with the bootloader and OS, uh, creates the chain of trust, which means the previous layer component record the measurement of the next layer into the measurement register. And the CPU may provide multiple measurement registers to record the different components. And the CPU hardware will generate a, a report for that include all the measurement registers and the max the report for ensure the integrity. Then a special component like coating enclave or coating TD can verify the MAC for the TD report and then sign the report and make it into a TD code. And the code will be presented to the remote attaching server to allow the verifier to check the measurement and register value inside of the TD code. And the code itself, you can treat it as a signature to include the measurement for TCB, measurement for the virtual bias, here is the OVMF, and the measurement for the OS. Here, the OS means a bootloader like shim, grub, or kernel, or an ETRD. And it can also be extended to more runtime measurements like dynamic kernel module. Uh, this figure shows the detail of the TD report and the measurement data structure. And the yellow part is a TDX module in C, and it is the TCB, and there's a dedicated MRC in the TD report. Uh, the green part is the initial firmware code. Here it is a boot firmware volume inside of OVMF. It is measured by the TCB C. TDX module in the seam, and the TD report use the MRTD to record the record its value, and the rest blue uh, uh, blue is the firmware configuration. The red is the next uh, firmware loaded code. Here it's a bootloader, and the purple is the OS kernel. They are recorded the uh, RTMR, which stands for runtime measurement register. They are extended by the initial boot firmware volume. Uh, the UEFI standard body defines a confidential computing extension in UEFI 2.10 and ACPI 6.5. It includes a EFI CC measurement protocol and a CCER ACPI table. And the CCER ACPI table record the measure, measurement sequence into an event log, and each event entry is a measurement action. As such, 
the verifier can reproduce the measurement register value by using the event log. And currently, EDK2 OVF and, and the Shim and Grub, they already did such support. Next, next page, please. And this figure shows the TTCC measurement flow in the pre boot in environment. The OVMF produced the CC measurement protocol and the CC uh, ACPR table. The OS loader, like GRUB or SHIM, they can consume the CC measurement protocol to record more measurement records, such as a, a, a kernel or init RD. And finally, the attestation component can, can retrieve the data in the measurement register and the event log in the CCR ACPR entry to perform the verification. Next page. And here is an example we showed that uh, the dump of the CC event log table, and we create a tool to retrieve it and uh, print the TDE report and dunk the, uh, dump the event log table. The tool is open source, so you can try it on any Intel TDX platform. And uh, in that uh, repository, we also include a, a full event log for the uh, direct boot use case and the grub to boot use case. Uh, Besides the OVMF in VM use case, the TD shim in container use case also support the measurement to build the chain of trust. The flow in the TD shim is similar to the flow in the TDVF. The only difference is that in the direct boot use case, the shim firmware will launch the kernel directly. As such, the kernel is measured into RTMR1. While in the VM use case, the kernel is launched by the OS loader. As such, the OS loader is in RTMR1, while the OS is in RTMR2. But the rest part, are, they are all the same. The, the shim also produced a CCR ACPR table, so the runtime component can get that inf information. Next page. With all this uh, background introduction, I will transfer control to Ken, and he will lead the discussion on disk encryption solution in the second. Uh, thank yeah, thank you, Jiren. So, um, Jiren introduced the measurement and the trust chain. Based on the measurement and the trust chain, we can do a detection within the confidential environment. There, there are two uh, confidential, uh, there are two attestation usage. One is launch time attestation. In launch time attestation, so it is in uh, pre-boot OMF uh, phase or the early OS boot in the RD phase. So for launch time, a uh, uh, detection can be used to get a key to decrypt the VM image view and view the uh, full disk encryption tools in launch time. For OS runtime um, usage, the attestation agent can get the key from the remote key management server and uh, then do maybe uh, AI model decryption you, uh, uh, workload. So here we only discuss the uh, launch time because it will impact the system boot in the guest. Um, when we think about the decryption in the launch time, uh, the attestation agent need to get, uh, get the code. Uh, the code generated by the code generation service on the uh, on the host or the bare metal, um, and after gener at, after getting the code, then the attention agent will send the code to the remote uh, key management servers. So the we need to use the TLS to protect the data in the transfer, and uh, we need a network stack. After get the key from the remote key management server, uh, we can use the key to do the full de decryption. So the argument here is how we establish the TRS stack, translation uh, layer security, transport uh, layer security stack, and how we use uh, establish the network stack uh, to communicate with the remote uh, management server. For example, 
if we implement a pre-boot decryptions, it means the attestation agent is running in pre-boot OMF phase. And uh, the attestation agent in the OMF will get will call TTVM call uh, to, to get code. Uh, the TTVM call will pass the request to the host QGIS service. And the QGIS service will, will, will return the code uh, back to the VM uh, with uh, the gas. And uh, the OMF in the, the, the TD gas need to send, send the code to the remote server, right? So the OMF include the uh, RESTful API HTTPS protocol and the TRS stack. Um, but uh, due to the security consideration in the computer environment, the OMF will not include or enable the network, network stack. So we will pass the TRS request to the host TCP stack with the VM call or VSocket. Then send the, the request to the remote uh, management servers. And the remote management server, key management server, disk key management server will return the key. Then the TDVF, uh, the OMF will save the key to the store, to the ACPI table, a storage volume key table. It's defined in the GHCS back or ACPI 6.5. After got a key, um, the Decrypt agent in the OMF or the grub in the um, in the pre-boot environment can do the can can decrypt the disk because grub already supports the LUKS. Um, but also you can let the init RD to do the decryption um, later in early wet boot time. So for pre-boot disk decryption, you can see there are a lot of benefit. So for from talent perspective, because everything is get the key, get the quota, uh, get the code, get the key is done by OMF. So there's no any impact to talent image. So it simplifies the talent effort to create the VM image. And uh, it is flexible because uh, you can support the grub to decrypt the disk, and you can support the decrypt agent to decrypt the disk, or you can leverage initrd to do disk decryption. But the cons, um, so so the because every the whole flow, at the same flow is done by OMF, so it needs a lot of change in different components such as VM core, V socket, host stack, uh, and the OMF. So this is the pre-boot decryption, and then uh, we can. We can you you uh, we can design and implement the early boot description. Early boot description means uh, the TDS agent is a Linux application running within the initRD. The initRD will will call the will invoke the TD code kernel driver, and uh, the kernel driver will pass the, the code uh, request to the host to generate the code. This is very similar with the was runtime attestation because the TD agent in initRD is just a Linux application. After um, after get the code, so the TD agent in initRD will establish the full TCP stack along with the TRS stack, and the TD agent in initRD will send the stack, send the uh, the the request to the remote server, disk server, then get the key. Then do the uh, then do the disk decryptions. So for the pros for these solutions, for early boot disk decryption solution is that the attestation process is running in user space like a normal runtime attestations, and it because it does not require any change in the OMF. So in the web BIOS, so it can support different uh, BIOS and bootloaders such as OMF. Such as TDCM for container use case. For cons that uh, it may be it may need modify the customer VM image if you put the customized in the the the, the VM get image you need to modify it. But you can also pass the VM the uh, the image with the 
uh, in the command, launch command, recumul. So this is two um, two uh, disc decryption solutions. One is uh, one is the pre-boot uh, disk decryption, and another is early boot disk decryption. So finally, um, we built the TDS MVP stack and open source as the GitHub. So in current phase, the TDS MVP stack includes a full component for the VM or Twitter use case. It means it can support libword to launch a QMU, uh, libword uh, as the auto treaters, QMU as a VMM, and uh, create the normal TDVM for VM use case. It includes the attention agent uh, bootloader and the TDGET kernel. But in future, we, will, we plan to support um, Kubernetes use case. On the Kubernetes, you can launch the TDVM with Kata, uh, with confidential container, Kata based confidential container. Or you can create the TDVM and manage by Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a plugin uh, to help manage the VM on the Kubernetes. Um, but for the confidential on the Kubernetes use case, uh, it require TDCM and the cloud hypervisor also beyond the QMU and the OMF. So the Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes Ultra use case is still working in progress. Okay, uh, that's all my all our slides. So, any question or comments or suggestion? Um, sorry, I cannot hear anything. Can someone type in? Can you hear? Can you hear anything? No, I cannot hear anything. Thank you so, for the talk. Yes, I can hear you, David. Yes, th thank you for your um, thank you for your talk. It, it's a, it's good that uh, we can see the differences of um, um, both of the boot stacks, uh, both the early and the pre-boot um, mechanisms. Pre-boot, yeah. So what what your question? So Oh, I saw the question is that uh, my question is sign key as you deployed. Uh, um, so uh, sign case as you deploy. Come So um, back to.
I'm not sure what what do you mean. So for sign key as you deployed in QMUS, uh, so oh, so the do you mean the the key part, the um, the here right? So uh, QMU, yeah. So so Jiwen, uh, do you do you want to response? Uh, I, actually, I I'm not clear about the about the question. Uh, is so signing key means the uh, code signing key or something else? No, I cannot hear hear audience. I can only hear the David uh, song, uh, voice. I cannot hear others. Cannot. Yeah, I cannot hear anything. So if you talk about the uh, code uh, sign key, so the the uh, the request the code. Uh, I can, uh, thank you. Thank you. No, the code the the, the 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 code signing key is not deployed to QEMU. It is it is generated by the coding enclave. It has no relationship with QEMU. I I believe. So, so we 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 must maintain the confidentiality of the of any signing key, so it won't be included in the QEMU. Yeah, the code generation service is running on on the host, so um, the request. Yeah, on the host. Yeah, so the. The TDVF or the, the OMF. Uh, so if you want to get the code, you need to pass the request. Uh, you, you need to pass the request to the host, and uh, the service running on the host will help to to generate the the code. Sign, yeah, and sign the code. I, I still cannot hear anything. I, do, I don't know if um, the I see this question from Dimitri and Michal. Um, I, I think the the bit that's not clear from your diagram is how the quoting is secure. Now, I know that you have uh, some enclaves to do that and TD calls and things, which I kind of vaguely understand. But I, I think if somebody's not seen this, they, they don't understand what keeps the, wh where the quote generation lives. Do you, want, do you want uh the, to yeah so 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 coating un, enclave is a, a special uh, is a confidential computing environment 
So the enclave itself is signed. Uh, so it, it so it, it guarantees the confidentiality of the enclave content. So inside of this uh, coding enclave, the enclave will verify the TD report to ensure the TD report has a, a valid MAC. That means it is really generated by a, 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 a valid uh, TDX machine. Then it will sign this TD report into a TD code. The key is the 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 key to sign the TD code is generated at the coding enclave launch time. So it then it use a X five nine certificate chain means the platform certificate key will be used to sign the code signing key, and the platform signing platform certificate key is signed by an Intel root Intel root key, which means if you get a code, you can verify the the code signature by using the the code public certificate. Then you can verify the code public certificate by using the platform certificate key. And you can verify the platform certificate key with the Intel, Intel root key. And that is how we create the certificate chain for the TD code. And uh, we publish some library uh, which can be used to finish this uh, code uh, retrieve and, uh, and verification. Um, uh, in addition to the Jiren, so, um, so before the code, uh, so the, the report is got in the VM guess, and the report will be uh, protected by the some MAC key for integrity, and uh, the the TT report will send to the host, send the host, host uh, the code QGS on the host, and the QGS actually is running within. Uh, another uh, uh, computer environment such as SGS or TDS. So, so yeah, so the QGS will verify the TD report from the guest as a local transition, then generate the code um, back, send it back to the VM guest. Any clear? Any more questions? 